Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Sean. Welcome back, Sean. Uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We took care of rally cars recently. Um, we're going to have more rally cars. Yes, we are. I can't. I can't say who or when yet, but I'm down. Rally cars are fun. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we're still socially distant. We don't care about the Delta variant. We all got vaccines, but still. Um, Tonight, I'm in the Midwest, Ross is in the Northeast, Sean's on the West Coast. And actually, the Delta variant, we probably should worry about. Probably. Get a shot. Yep. Please. Yep. Wash your hands. <laughs> hey, man. Wash your hands. Don't cough on people. Go live life. That's what, yes. I, that's what I'd say. Stay outside. Away. There yeah. you go. Uh, the news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I did see my doctor. I did ask about taking Stellantis. <laughs> It's the hackiest joke ever. Uh, yeah, because yeah, literally, it is. is a car brand. Oh, it, it also so sounds like bad. a pharmaceutical. It, it's so yeah. bad. It's oh. an over-the-counter. But they had a day. They did have a day. They had an EV day. An Stellantis EV day, right. EV day is one letter away from being something that would actually need a prescription. Um, sorry for the <laughs> gratuitous joke there. It had to happen. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, Stellantis and Jeep announced basically that everything Jeep is selling and everything what used to be called FCA is selling is going to have an electric variant and we yeah, care. We went from a uh, Hellcat, everything to electrify everything is uh, I think the point they were making. Yep. Okay. Very quickly and perhaps expectedly. I mean, it's the way of the world right now. So they basically told us there's going to be a four XE four by E four by yeah. Four by E four by E of, yep. of all of the Jeeps and they showed us what looks like an all-electric Wrangler coming for 2024 um, with uh, what they're calling autonomous off-road driving, which is what? terrifying from the video. Yeah, if a Tesla can't even see a semi crossing the highway in front of you, I'm not so sure I want my uh, autonomous EV on Black Bear navigating oh, me uh, down that road. So. No. Uh, I'm, I listen, the, the video they put out was awesome. There was a lot of goofy tech in there. That's never going to see the light of day. Um, it was just all talking points and the a couple who's hiking and then their car picks them up at the end. No, <laughs> listen, that's like the mountain biker who's a downhill guy. Right. And he's shuttles, but it's the opposite. Like when I ride my bike, I want to ride uphill to earn my downhill. That's like riding uphill. And then the shuttle picks you up at the top of the hill. Like, mm-hmm. no, nobody wants that. Nobody right. wants, it's like, where did my Wrangler go? Oh, it just fell. Sorry, it didn't see the culvert was washed out and now it just fell 5,000 feet below and you're still still hiking. So, seriously, uh, not a fan, not a fan of that one. I, yeah. Self driving stuff still like 15, 20 years away. Like, yeah, I mean, the reality is, listen, like everybody's talking about how self driving cars are the future. This is that. No, don't, you know, most of us don't want a steering wheel out of our hands. I could see it on my commute if it's 45 minutes to an hour and a half each way, like mine is, where it'd mm-hmm. be nice to get some of that time back in traffic on the 405, right? In Outside traffic. of that, got no place for it, right? Here's the other thing. Nothing has been solved in terms of laws and insurance, right? If yes. you've got two car companies and you've got two different algorithms, do you pay more for the Mercedes algorithm that saves its client instead of the pedestrian or the other car? If, if the accident is going to happen, right there, it's inevitable. There's no calculation that gets you out of it. Do they make it so it saves the outside person or saves their customer? Yeah, and, trolley then theory. and then who the is re- exactly who is responsible, who's liable for that. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be figured out before we go full tilt into that. And hopefully it's, Long after I, you know, uh, can't drive anymore, <laughs> and I can summon, I can summon my uh, steering wheel as pod to take me to the old folks' home or something like that. But uh, I'm not a fan, and uh, it's it's further out than people think. It, oh yeah, it reminds me of, and this is, it doesn't feel like that long ago to me, but like I Robot 2004, Will Smith. Yeah, yeah. The robot rips him out of the car, but doesn't save the little girl who's also in the car because the robot calculated right. that he had the higher chance of survive. Like. Mm-hmm. and that's complete fiction anyway but like right we're playing talking, god at that's that point. 17 years ago and we're still going yeah. you know uh, like i think asimov wrote those books forever ago and we're still yeah. not oh. yeah. so anyway there's I, a tangent, I'm sorry guys this, no, this, no. Is what hap- this is what happens when i come on your podcast <laughs> well, you i take that noise constantly did that's you see do. the video of the oh god was it a model x or a y 
in Seattle with the latest full self-driving update that was literally could not recognize the monorail podiums in the middle of the road. Jesus Christ. Like the monorail didn't exist to the Tesla, like, and they exist. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, they're, they definitely uh, exist. That's for sure. Yeah. So hey. anyway, so there's a, there's a divide between the things that Jeep showed off. There's the autonomous potentially happening, you know, like fictional thing for now. And then there's the electric vehicles, which uh, there's going to be electric Jeeps, whether there's autonomous off-roading or not. Um, yeah, and, and autonomous Jeeps are coming for sure. Like that's that's going to be a thing. Grand Wagoneer is going to have it. The Grand mm-hmm. Cherokee L is going to have it. Like that's how you have to have it to compete in in that space. I sampled the first version of their low level, I guess L two, where you had to have hands on the steering wheel. Uh, you know, it, it, if you go to fourwheeler.com, we pulled apart that video in each of the points they brought up and said which ones were realistic, which ones weren't. Like the ones that it got me excited were the ones where the driver's seat folded flat so you could sleep in your Jeep. Like I was more excited about that than the drone tracking where it lands on your hood and then like it follows your Jeep through the woods. Like, I, I mean, I spent a lot of time off-roading and driving cross country. I would love to have that lay flat option in the, in the front seat of my Jeep right now. Right. Yeah. That'd be pretty clutch. Taking a nap, occasional nap, but yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, that is the autonomous stuff is there, there's so many caveats and so many things that have to get worked out. It may happen and it may not. Um, I, I think what I'm most excited for to steer it to me selfishly is the prospect of that Magneto concept they showed last year. Was that this year? That was yeah, this year. It was yeah, literally this year. This year. Yep. Shit. Oh my God. What is time? That thing drives um, yeah. awesome by the way. It's so much fun. You had seat time. Right. 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 And it's a traditional like, six speed with a clutch it's not a sequential or anything right it's like a, a, for a real it's the it's everything from the v6 powertrain that behind the engine is all identical what's brilliant about that the way that those guys at jeep figured it out is if you think about it right you've got um how should i should put this um the best way to get a jeeper to like electric uh electrification is to make the vehicle not weird so everything in front of the transmission is new and battery and everything behind it takes the exact same axles, the exact same wheels, the exact mm-hmm. same slip kit. That's the way to do it. That's the brilliance behind Magneto. And they actually tune the electric motor for the same power output as the V6 um, mm-hmm. because they wanted to keep all the componentry downstream, you know, even though they could have made the, the motor a lot more powerful and it drives awesome. And so basically what's weird about it though is you, you don't need the clutch to shift except for, let me get this right. It's, it's been a while since I, I went through it. There's a, I did a Magneto story, you guys can find. But anyway, um, you can shift it. The thing's got so much torque. I think it's only when you're moving, but you can't leave it in gear because it's there's no compression from the engine or anything to hold it. So you have to use the parking brake, otherwise it'll roll away from you. So there's certain weird things about driving an electric with a traditional manual transmission that you have to relearn. But once you get used to it, it's actually really fun. It seems like the potential perfect application for something like what they built it in you know sure. especially the short you know the shorter wheelbase configuration but that, yeah no uh, the least amount of change while moving forward is kind of the best way to get to the traditional jeep enthusiast yeah. um yeah but that thing looks killer is that's like is that the 392 or the mojave hood on there too it looks yeah. so good yeah well it's and they you can see all the heat exchangers and stuff you know yeah. if you look in the in the grills i mean there's there's a lot going on. It was built by Wabasto and uh, it's, it's pretty well sorted um, in terms of drivability. It's not totally sorted with all of the vehicle architecture, the screens and stuff aren't, aren't all working perfectly when I drove it, but it's, it's, it's amazingly refined for what it is and, and very capable. And there's something to be said, like I'm not an EV hater, but I'm also not jumping on the bandwagon to go like, let's push everything into EV, especially in off-road space. Cause you have, range anxiety and things like that. And there's companies out there, Rivian, Cheap, others who are mitigating that by putting, you know, charging stations near trailheads and things like that. So that kind of stuff is cool. But um, I will tell you that there's something cool about being in a doorless, roofless, open top Jeep, almost completely silent, only hearing the electric motors whiz by. I would imagine that would be super bitching for rolling into a campsite late at night. Maybe you're a wildlife photographer and you don't want to scare off the the wildlife or, or whatever. I think there's a lot of cool places to use it but also like you know a lot of us like to go off-road because we like getting away from people and getting into nature 
feeling the breeze, hearing the wind, hear the trees rustle. You can hear animals, like all the mm -hmm. stuff you can't hear in a traditional vehicle. It was it was actually sort of pleasantly surprising that you know you drive it and you're like, all right, I I get it, I get it. So that's pretty cool. Did they say how much weight the electric motors add over the V6? Yeah, it's it, I don't know, have it in front of me, but it's you know I want to say it's pretty heavy. I want to say several hundred pounds, thousand pounds. I don't know, okay. something like that. So it's it's manageable. So should, do you want to stay? We could talk about Jeep for a while. Um, can I, can stay I pivot Jeep. real fast? Yeah, 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 do it. Can I talk about the thing that I drove? Because it's it's similar, but not the exact same. Um, okay. Of course, yeah. I Let's... didn't pull up my photos. <laughs> I, I pulled up all of Sean's photos to have for, <laughs> for dropping in here. I didn't. So I have a buddy uh, who works at a VW dealership and he let me have a go in an ID4. Um, so similar thought process. Oh man, where did I hide these photos? There we go. Um, of course I took it. They have a, a, a dilapidated mall nearby the dealership. And so of course I drove the, of course they do. Oh, the yeah. future. I drove the future right next to, come on, sure. Malls, on. By the way, think. speaking of VW, does anybody think it's a little slimy that they help build out and in, in the infrastructure and invest in uh, Electrify America with Dieselgate uh, funds and then just dumped it for a bunch of money because they said they needed battery <laughs> uh, cash flow to do their battery cars? Like, that's a little dirty. Yeah, I'm just going to nice. call them out. That's dirty. I mean, that's dirty money. That's the name <laughs> of the game for them. Yeah. So. This is the first ID4 that I've ever seen that wasn't in the blue with the black. Roof. Blue, yeah. So this is a a first edition ID4. Like it literally, um, like it has the words first on the steering wheel. And of course, I don't have a picture of the steering wheel right so now. So this but is like this is the internet circa like 2004 with commenting systems. Yeah, exactly. First, yeah, first, first yeah, exactly, hundred percent. So this is your instrument cluster. So when we're, we're talking about like how similar Magneto was to a regular driving experience. Yeah. This is, I, I don't want to say it's like completely different. It was just non-traditional. Um, it self. looks like a physical version of a heads-up display. Like that's all the information yeah. you're getting, right? It's exactly, that's, that was it. And it took me a little bit to get used to it. Like the, it, it had the lane change stuff that was on the side and like there were buttons on the steering wheel. And so... I've been in new vehicles. I've been in 2021 vehicles, but like this one was different. Like it was not the same in a number of areas. Now, things I loved, I didn't know about the driver's seat and I sat into it and I, I'm, I'm not an ancient man, but I'm, I'm 40. I have some back pain <laughs> and I just adjusted the seat a little bit. If you think bit. it's bad at 40, wait till you get to 43. Exactly. Then it's like all downhill big time. It's exponential <laughs> after 40. Just so That's you know. kind of how I've, I've, I need to start my stretching. I really. <laughs> yeah, uh, yoga what, actually helps. Yeah, exactly. When we, we had Zach Clapman on, he's like, dude, you need to start stretching now because you're about to yeah. be in a world of hurt. I was like, all right, <laughs> yeah. so I will listen to you, Zach. I promise. He's not wrong. <laughs> so me, I had back surgery too. Shit. Yeah, but you did it from an ATV, wasn't it? Like there was. Oh, uh, we don't know what it was from. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the seat in this thing was like memory foam. And so like, I, I kind of like just settled into it and felt supported. And like, it was okay, a first, that's a trap. That's a trap. Okay. Because that's how these, that's how these a-holes sell mattresses. You go into the store like, memory yeah. foam, and you like lay it and you're like, Oh my God, it's, this is the best thing I've ever had in my life. I need to spend double for a mattress. And then you get home in the the damn thing is about 400 degrees hotter than anything you've ever slept in there's no airflow there's no cushion because you bottom out on the yep. cover like I, I it's a trap they want you to sit in the dealership and go this is amazing and then once you drive it you're probably like this sucks mm -hmm. so Just so you know i, How's it I, feel I, on I mean six hour road trip i spent an hour exactly. with it on like an 88 degree day so like it was warmish I didn't really, I didn't really feel anything going on behind me. I just felt like my back not hurt for, for an hour at least. So I was like, <laughs> All right. I was, I was content with that. The, the, it's always like when your wife's like, Hey, do you want to watch TV with me or go out with your friends? And you're like, it's a trap. It's a trap. I'm not answering that. <laughs> like that's what memory foam car seats are. Exactly. That's bait. You want to buy this one or that one? It's a trap. Right. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. Well, I was in on this uh... one. <laughs> I need to go get another test track. This <laughs> This system in the middle is like the multimedia, uh, the infotainment stuff. 
I need to spend more time with that. I, as being someone who's familiar with a lot of modern cars and getting in a bunch of stuff, this baffled me for a while. I was like, um, can I, can I just get music? How do I get off? <laughs> how do I get off the Bluetooth setting of okay. the phone that's clearly not in the vehicle and get to just FM radio? It's all about One, CarPlay, honestly. Like that's I drive so many different vehicles. Plug my phone in, hit CarPlay, I do everything for my phone. I don't even deal with the game based sound system. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's way easier that way. I have a really serious question though on this center screen that you're showing us here. Yeah. What is that thing that says eco? And why is there something that says eco in an electric vehicle? So that is the passenger's climate control setting. And I don't, I'm still not sure what eco meant. It means that that person is not getting any airflow because you don't have a passenger so that you can okay. eke three more miles out of the sucker. That, that, Probably. And that yeah. if, if the car's realizing that, I'm all on board. That's brilliant. Um, I hated the haptic buttons. Like there's no physical buttons in this thing. You have to just like tap and hope that the digital display. Like the four wheel drive system on a new uh, Defender. Once the uh, screen goes on the fritz and disappears, you can't access uh, any of your, uh -huh. you know, any of your off-road nope. settings. Way to go guys. No, no. Volvo recently, no <laughs> if the, screen, the center screen of the Volvo dies, you can't do anything except put the car in, in gear. Yeah. Hard start. <laughs> so. Uh, this this thing right here on the side of the image, I, I guess I forgot to take an actual photo of this. This is the the is it gear selector? Is that still the same thing in an EV? Because there's only like one gear or two gears. Like it doesn't. Sure. This is the drive selector. We'll call yeah. it that. Mm -hmm. So where before it was, so there's the digital representation. Wait wait wait! Did those pedals? It, it was literally pause and play like on a music. Yes. Like, I'm sorry, that just isn't uh, serious enough for a real car. How much money did they spend on the tooling for that? What, what would no the clutch idea. pedal Stupid. be? This is what I want to know. This car is clearly made for like millennials who oh, yeah. and, and, and younger generations driving because apparently they don't understand what a throttle and a brake are. So they have to have right. play and pause. What would the what, clutch be? Why isn't the why brake pedal a stop and the clutch pedal would right. be the, would be the, the pause. pause? That's yeah. what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. yeah. I said, we're not Stop stopping our adventure. I don't we're know. only pausing it while we, you know, spend five hours recharging. <laughs> mm -hmm. And You're what only... happens if you have regenerative braking on and you just let go of the gas and it starts to slow down? It's, no, that well, has that's... the fifteen second go back. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's the slow down the play. It's the <laughs> well done. Point well seven five play, which no one ever does. <laughs> right. So anyway, uh... you, you flip this little handle on the side of the instrument cluster up. It puts you in D. If you flip it into, if you flip it again, it goes to B. I don't know what B stands for. I'm assuming it's brake, but it creates the one pedal driving experience. Oh, okay, so as yeah, soon so. as you lift off the accelerator, the vehicle's starting to brake and regenerate, which this sure. little thing down here, when you're in the green, you're adding juice. When you're in the blue, which I don't know why it's blue and not. Why it's blue? Yeah. Yeah. Not red. It's pretty red. But um, so if you're colorblind, green, you're not discerning the difference between that whatsoever. Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> green and blue are hard. Hey, but, but at least at least your uh, pedals have the uh, play and pause button, and your <laughs> battery charger is actually uh, just as small yeah. in the same exact icon as your phone. Sean's going to get me in so much trouble. Chris is never going to let me drive anything ever again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. I really like this thing. We'll so, tell them to make it better. <laughs> well, but it's for its purpose of, and, and I think Sean's right, like it's for younger people. This is only 45, and this was the first edition. So, like, uh, a, I think a regular nice editions in like low 40s as an, an, uh, an A to B point to point vehicle. It was delightful. It's not fast, but because it's an EV, it's quick. So like in traffic uh, and not that Topeka has tons of horrible traffic, but like in areas where I encountered traffic, I, I was able to dart in and out. Uh, it's short. It's uh, there's no like weird, like it's actual traditional side view mirrors. There's no like images that show up somewhere like it was just it's similar to a normal car as soon as you get used to the gear selector thing on the side of the tiny instrument cluster and the ability to plug in your phone to carplay or android auto i genuinely don't understand why anybody tries to play games with how to select your gear like if yeah. you're getting in a car for the first time you don't need to have to sit there for a few seconds and figure out what to do to make the car move it it was very intuitive. Like it wasn't like crazy hard. Like you press up and it picks D. The thing that Although, I struggled with is it on or off is my issue. 
Well, that's the other thing. You don't really know. Like, is it going to sleep? Is it on? Is it off? I was going to go back to you shouldn't have to get into a car and figure out how to drive it. Although then I think of like three on the tree or in the case. Dude, that's like a thought old, process. Right. Yeah. Or in the case of an old flat fender where you've got a uh, you've got the shifter, you've got in and out, you've got high and low and you've got overdrive. So there's four things sticking out of the floor. Exactly. You also have That's to right. think so full circle, maybe. I mean, yeah. plain devil's advocate here. No, I like We're, it. I'm mean, not, not on your side, but I'm also going to throw that out there. We're coming up on a hundred years on that, so you know <laughs> it's about time. If you don't know anyway, by now, you're never going to know. Yeah, I I really liked it. I what what impressed me is my I have a 2017 Suburban. And it's got magnetic ride. Bump bumps are smoothed out quite a bit. Crazy long wheelbase, right? That should help. This thing seemed to glide across the same spots that I felt in the Suburban early. Like I drove the same really crappy road. The Suburban rattled its way across it. This thing just kind of went, wee, mm-hmm. which to be honest, that's the sound I made most of the times when I was driving. It was just, <laughs> like it just, cause it didn't make Jetson noises. I need Jetson noises for an EV. Yeah. Like, Tycon. So mm-hmm. I, I liked it a lot as an A to B unit. My my concern with EVs is always like battery tech and what do we do when the batteries start to run down? Like just or the fact that they're way dirtier when you take into account all the uh, war torn countries that we're strip mining in, or for minerals, or that a lot of that comes from I don't know some of our worst enemies on Earth, and we have to get it from them. Or <laughs> maybe the, like in California, elements we, across the world. We're just we're shutting down our last uh, nuke plant here in California and trying to rely on you know uh, solar Wait, really? and wind. Yeah, that yeah, doesn't El, make sense. El, yeah, Diablo. And then uh, so now we all can't have our AC on on a hot day. We're going through a bit of a heat wave right now. And yesterday they had a flex alert. And you're going, but you're trying to get everybody to plug in their cars at the exact same time. They're mm-hmm. literally like, hey, uh, those of you with the electric cars, could you unplug them till like 9 p.m.? Because, you know, we're low on power. Mm-hmm. Well, anybody who has their EV as their third car or a second car, right. I could get it. But if you've totally bought into EV, and your, t- your deal is like, this is my only car. Are you really going to unplug? Because if something happens, how, you, how do you get away? Right? Yeah, if you have so, to get to work in the morning. I mean, it's, it's like the state with the most screwed up, you know, infrastructure is the one mandating all this stuff, <laughs> trying to push stuff forward. And I'm like, yeah. just wait, just wait. Because right yeah. now you, you think that it's bad. And you can like in California, let's say you have a Nest or an EcoB or something like that. You can sign up with your utility because they're all Wi-Fi enabled. Give them the code and they can give you, they'll give you a discount on your bill if they can turn off your AC remotely. What do they do when they start turning your car off remotely or right. any of that? I mean, that stuff's happening. So guys, like That's it's, terrifying. it's, I don't want to have to worry about it. I want to, I want to be able to get out if I need to get out. Yeah. That, that I mean, from the top, that doesn't make sense. Like nuclear is safe. And aside from not knowing what to do with the, you know, the byproduct, it's clean. And Which, I, people so, just don't realize I live like right near Indian point. So, I, you know, it, it, they talk about closing that down every six months. Is it Finland but, or Sweden that now has the answer to nuclear waste? Crap. I would have no idea. the answer. I, I haven't heard this. Uh, yeah. it, it's it. Well, it's, it's very similar to what we, you would normally consider it to be. Uh, like repository dump somewhere because that's what Just, yeah yeah in the bottom of the ocean yeah no <laughs> uh so it's not in the bottom <laughs> of the ocean neighbor? it's going to be a it's a it's an elaborate cave system that cave system yeah it but it's like oh man what's the uh it's probably like for all those people that think you know there's like a sub earth and you get it into it from like you know a <laughs> volcano in antarctica or something like this you're going to find out that we're shoving nuclear waste down probably. into these like into these like <laughs> caverns and that link and now we're just going to kill all of the under earth people and they're going to this is yeah. how the zombie apocalypse starts it's not that's already started zombies it's that the nuclear <laughs> waste is pushing them all oh out from under you know sub earth and bring it up here and this, every, this every image starts. i can find of this stuff is like crazy tiny <laughs> <laughs> this is a movie in the making the rock is somewhere nearby so for yeah. the for like the spent stuff or the spent fuel right this is their plan is it literally gets put in a hole sealed and then they like backfill over the sealed hole hey out of sight out of mind no yeah problem. <laughs> yeah right that's and they're they they are prepping like the largest new kind of i 
watched a YouTube video recently. And Why don't we be... just send it to space? <laughs> I mean, it would be bad if the rocket blew up. I get that. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not super. That would be <laughs> horrific. I'd be problem. I'd be problem. It would not be good. But, but <laughs> if the rocket doesn't blow up, just, just send it past Pluto. Like, you know, if that there's aliens in the, the aliens. United, listen, that would be a aliens in the universe. There's a way to, to find make out. themselves known, right? Oh, well, yeah. that's just send like a freaking huge bomb we, out. We've said, nowhere. <laughs> we've we don't said, condone this. Don't yeah, just let the record show. back in like a big fishing net full of these containers. <laughs> and be like, here, you lost this. It's just we, we've we've sent nuclear reactors to space before. Like we do that all the time. Like if they're small, we can like, space. See Richard Branson today. Did he yeah, go? Yeah, he did. He was floating around inside yep. uh, the Virgin Galactic. And he's back. Pretty freaking cool. Now it's Bezos' time. It's the billionaires <laughs> are like going to be battle for space supremacy. Right. <laughs> this, is, all, like, <laughs> this, this is a movie. <laughs> the thing that before is. wasn't this is. Anyway, um, let's talk about anyways. something that's more terrestrial, Ross. Like what you're yes. doing. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> things I have been driving. Drove that Ridgeline for a week. Yep. It was mm, not mind-blowing, but better than I expected at all. The ride quality, because it's because the pilot on which it's based rides well. They lengthen the wheelbase and it rides even better. And, you know, the V6 is fine. The nine speed transmission is like imperceptible. Uh, I could not believe how well it eats up highway miles. Uh, we, I took it from Connecticut to almost Canada in Northern New Hampshire, and it just devours highway miles. And between the storage space in the back seat with the back seat flipped up and the in bed brilliant flip up trunk thing uh, i literally didn't have to put anything in the bed and that was using it on a trip as like chase and support vehicle for um for atv and utv stuff so i mean it was a shit ton of gear that we had in there and it i mean i i genuinely do not understand why anybody would spend almost three thousand dollars on that hpd package which gets you nothing except wheels and fender flares and stickers Wait, hold on fender flare stickers and bronze wheels that power bronze, wheels. bronze is very expensive these days very expensive. it is it, it's uh <laughs> yes but the, the wheels are, age those wheels are the same size and the same width as their normal wheels and they weigh the same so you're not actually getting anything from it except wheels yes. that so you cosmetic. can't tell yeah, you can't tell if they're off-road style wheels or like, you know, sport truck style wheels. And, you know, for $3,000, they could have just upgraded the suspension and, and put on all trains and called it. Um, but other than that, I was, you know, I usually have like a sense of what I'm getting into when I review vehicles or when I have a loan. And I had never driven a Ridgeline and I was like, I've driven Tacoma, I've driven Frontier, I've driven Colorado, Canyon, you know, everything in that space. And the Ridgeline was like shocking. And, you know, for for 99% of people who buy pickups and don't need to tow more than 5,000 yeah. pounds. Listen, if it's your Home Depot rig and you're going to go get potting supplies and some mulch, yep. it's, it's all day long, right? And like it's a great and... Odyssey minivan with an open cargo bed. That's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. And it rides like an Odyssey it's it's smooth it's quiet i i'm not a fan of the floorboards being so low and you being so low it, it if you ever sat in a honda it has a honda seating position it's everything you would expect the butch nose on it is a little bit better before it just less felt bad. yeah it just felt bad at least it's trying to sort of be a truck now it's okay it's i'll leave it at that it's okay yeah for 99 percent of people who buy trucks you know and just use them to drive to work and park in the parking garage or the city and then go home and use it, like you said, to load up shit, you know, for Home Depot or like if they're renovating or something, it's, it's perfect. It's what most people should buy. Um, it still has so, the cut out for the gas tank. Yeah. You're like obsessed with that, but it's, it's like, so weird. It's like, why did you make your flares so giant? And then you have flat face wheels with like, you know, uh, just, uh, and then it's so it's like low. The, I, the milled, you know, drill bit milled, yeah Things edges little around. holes yeah 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 okay my advice for anybody looking about ridgeline don't buy the hpd pack just just get a regular ridge line. just get a regular ridgeline and just spend the three thousand dollars on on wheels and tires the way you want to do it so that was the first one uh i also <laughs> had can-am outlander six i'm trying to go through these quick so i had the can-am go 650 that? uh mossy oak for this trip too and it was not perfect but real but 
for the purposes of this trip where it's like a combination of fire roads and you know tight twisty woodsy trails and like a little bit of rock crawling not really any mud uh it was you know it was pretty pretty well suited to it um that has better wheels than the ridge line it does and better tires (laughs) um (laughs) and a better front end no uh, but yeah, all the other machines in my group on this trip were thousand CC class UTVs. So, you know, cannons and Polaris razors and that, um, some of them turbocharged and I had no issue keeping up even though I was down about 50 horsepower. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, there were a few things I didn't love about it. Um, the rebound on the suspension is like a little too stiff, but it's again, can calls it like it's like work hunting and trail in that order, not trail hunting and work. So going You're down for a load to be on the back, whether it's, uh, yeah. you know, your hunting buddy or uh, a deer laying across the back of it or something. So exactly. or your brother or yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> I have stories about my brother on this trip that I'll tell Craig, I'll tell you off air. Yeah. Let's do that um, off air. Let's, but I like yeah, no, it, it's not real. You know, it, it, it was great. The power steering, I had the power, power steering on maximum most of the time. Uh, like for most assist, we did 180 miles in two days in the dirt, and it was you know 150 of those were in torrential downpour, like this picture that you have up. I was soaked <laughs> through every like literally, we didn't know it was gonna rain and it turned into a nightmare. Um, but you know, the thing was flawless. It, the mossy oak condition has factory winch, factory skids, and uh, the hand guards. Did were you pretty nice, add but, any more dents to the skids? I did not dent. I bottomed out the front end of the suspension. I started counting after the second time. Um, I bottomed <laughs> out the front end 12 times and did not actually make contact with the skid plates at any point during this trip. Okay. So, I mean, part of that is the fact that the trails up in Gorham, like Jericho State Park, they're geared towards Jeeps and side-by-sides at this point. There are very, very, very few people on ATVs or dirt bikes. So the nice part of the quad is you have maneuverability and it's nimble and you can dodge between bigger obstacles uh but you know i didn't i didn't take the easy line on anything and it, it literally it didn't miss a beat four wheel the only thing is i don't love can-am's four-wheel drive system so it's it's a uh there's a switch so it's two-wheel drive then you flip it into four-wheel drive but there's no manual option to lock the front differential so when you're in four-wheel drive it locks the back but the front is it's like an open disc open uh so like three wheel drive it's three wheel drive until it senses however much slip it thinks is the appropriate amount to lock the front end so something so you like have, an elsd or something like that yeah yeah it's not it's not i mean i think it's a mechanical lsd basically but it, it eventually locks the front end and you have no control over when it locks or how, like how much it locks and it could go from you know four wheel drive pitching a wheel up in the air and locking the front end while you know while you're three wheeling and rocketing you forward or just not and you don't have any way to know it's going to happen until it happens and i don't love that versus like yamaha's unit literally there's a switch you flip it for four you push the button for four wheel drive you you know flip the lever and push a button and that locks everything and it's fully you know full lock and you're in the so, dirt so wheels can slide they can but you know you'd like to have con- if, if you're going to spend 10 to fifteen thousand dollars on a toy you should be able to control it yeah so it works for most people it's a nuance but you know those of us in the know not our not our jam right right, right. not that my polaris is any better but yeah um and the last and final thing i have i have a trd pro forerunner i'm driving for the week and it looks great. Lunar Rock is the best color they've put on this thing it, yet. It really looks good. It literally, I have people slowing down on the highway to look at it. And I was in town today with the windows down, going to get a haircut. And two different people literally like walked up alongside the truck and were like, dude, I love that. What is that? I was like, it's the It'd same fucking thing they've been making since 2009. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> liter- literally. Yeah. Uh, that skid plate is offensive. It needs to go away. It's uh, very thin it aluminum, was, and yeah. it, it was offensive in uh, 2009. It's still offensive now. Yeah, yeah. so actually more offensive because they added the red TRD to it. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, 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 the skid's bad. Uh, 
the FJ cruiser roof rack also bad. You can't put a full size box on it. It's like for skis and nothing else. And the what? TRD exhaust is like Drony. the single worst exhaust I've ever heard on a production vehicle. Yeah. And it's, it's most vehicles. The noise comes out the back, like behind <laughs> the back seats, behind the cargo space. And that's what <laughs> there's no like resonator. So the noise comes up, behind the front row of seats and it just echoes through the cabin and it's just it's horrible which is a shame because the truck otherwise like the pictures where i took this is it's a dirt road and i went down the dirt road at like the speed limit's 40 and it 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 could be driving on on pavement like the suspensions finally worked out you know the steering they have right like it's it's a great truck otherwise they finally updated the infotainment and real buttons too Wow, look at that. 18. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, th- so I owned a 2018. They've worked out a lot of little things that were bothersome, bothersome about that. And now it, it's a great truck. It's just, it's a shame that you, or if it was me, if I was spending $53,000 on this truck, the first thing I would have to do is change the exhaust. Be- not because it's too quiet, but because it's too loud. Sean is a guy who does exhaust. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no guys so, anyway, yeah right <laughs> I, I do want to talk about jeeps so to uh to continue on my on my uh talking about my own vehicle stuff um my my jeep has changed status in order from scheduling to all of the materials have been collected and it is going into the build phase yes. very cool very cool well done it's been five weeks <laughs> so uh you're still ahead of schedule uh, <laughs> no, seven to eight weeks so yeah, it, yeah. Some right people are 10 to 12 weeks for some. I started so ordering I parts. I should tell you that when I bought mine and it was uh, eight weeks oh. that I uh, ordered it on Friday and uh, on Monday morning, my Jeep dealer called me and said, I don't know who you know, but your Jeep got built. <laughs> okay, and, well, you might know somebody that knows somebody. And so uh, Jim Morrison, <laughs> who's the head of Jeep uh, in North America, uh, called me and goes, what's your vehicle order number on like Friday afternoon? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's here. It is. Blah, blah, blah. He goes, okay, cool. And uh, he calls me Monday. He goes, Hey, did you know that they, uh, they built your Jeep? I'm like, yeah, I heard from the dealer. So <laughs> long story short, it was supposed to get uh, dropped from Toledo. So I bought it in California, but it was going to be drop shipped from Toledo to a local dealership for AV to pick up. Cause it was going to be a AV factory build. And they had it coming because the way the order system works, apparently they can't, input the uh, drop ship until after the order has been accepted from the system. Well, since they put it in on Friday, the order got accepted obviously over the weekend, nobody changed the status to drop ship because normally they have weeks to do it. And it was built and on Monday, it was already on a train for California oh, being loaded up in Toledo. And That's so I'm, I told Jeep, I'm like, hey, so I, I told Jim and I'm like, uh, it's going to the wrong place. He goes, what do you mean? And I said, well, it's supposed to be drop shipped to Michigan. He goes, I'll call you back. literally (laughs) and i have friends who work at the factory and they're like this does not ever happen i don't know what favors were pulled but once something's loaded on a train it's almost impossible yeah for anything to change they unloaded it from the from the train it got to where it was supposed to be in michigan uh in like a a week and a half so from the day i ordered mine the day that it was received to the dealer was like a week and a half that was something really ridiculous that's crazy that's how long some people are waiting from placing yeah. the order to getting their in <laughs> let, let alone my, having my it like who do you know I'm like, that's hey, crazy i know the guy that's crazy <laughs> i know the guy exactly. yeah how's yours holding up you, i mean last time you, yeah, the show, guy, you said uh, it was the best off-road thing you've owned ever so yeah i mean basically uh put so you got to remember this is my non-primary vehicle so normally i'm driving other vehicles and sits in the driveway unless i'm going on a trip Every trip I've gone on, uh, so I picked it up because of COVID in June of last year, and I put 20,000 miles on it in the course of this last year through 13 states and oh, wheeled Moab multiple times, Arizona a bunch of times, um, the San Juan Mountains of Colorado, uh, Idaho, Montana, I mean, California, Mojave Road, Eastern Mojave Heritage Trail, and uh, it's it's been great. I mean, it's uh, I just can't say enough good stuff about that setup, the AV lift kit, you know, the 2.5, Two the 37s is just the perfect balance of everything. Yeah, if you want to go racer parts, you know, rock crawler or something like that, like, you know, rock on, uh, no pun intended. But if you're doing 38s, 40s, like you're going to get into some race parts, no problem. 
but if you want a daily driver that just works that you just kind of turn the key on and go explore that the AV mm -hmm. setup is really hard to, to beat. And it's so much better than the Mopar setup. I drove the Mopar setup and I just am not impressed. The shock tuning is awful on it. Um, really? And they, you know, two inch. So they don't, they, it's just, I don't know, look at the parts lives. You don't, they don't have geometry, correct, uh, geometry correction brackets, all the things that make the AV system just so phenomenal on and off road. And I only have the, the 5100s because the 8100s have been on back order for so long and finally they're in. So I'm supposed to be able to do uh, Adventure Jeep 2.0 here coming up where we're going to do uh, wheels. I'm going to move to a KM3. Uh, I'm going to go to a bore wheel because I killed mm -hmm. my uh, Sevegres out on uh, <laughs> in Arizona um, on uh, rock on the uh, the uh, back road to uh, Crown King. Um, and uh, see, 8100s, wheels, tires. Uh, I've got a, a new boiler exhaust. I want to open up the supercharger a little bit. So put that on. It's coming back from Center Force. It just had the uh, the production clutch upgrade after a uh, prototype, two versions of the prototype clutch of the last year. <laughs> so it's really starting to come together and I'm looking forward to 2.0 because I've got some more adventuring to do. But this thing has, I'm not exaggerating, probably over 4,000 off-road miles. Forget about Jesus. the 20,000 on road, but 4,000 off-road miles. And it's That's a great. lot of miles off-road. That's off -road. a lot of off-road miles. Yeah. So and it's awesome. Is it's, that AEV's armor too? That's their front bumper? Yeah, so I've got it's a full AV package. Plus, I added a Evo manufacturing boats, uh, both sides on it, which is what I had on my JK. Mm -hmm. They're nice because they're forty five degree angle on the bottom, so you slide off stuff. That's and nice. then uh, I yep. completely destroyed my skid plates in Arizona, so I just put a full metal cloak belly pan on it. Um, and that <laughs> I haven't heard about that metal thing is in a while. awesome. Huh. Yeah, so they there. What I liked about theirs is you know Art Artec and some other ones make uh, aluminum, um, and you know it depends on how you're going to use it, right? Like it's lighter, it's it's not going to rust. The thing I like about Metal Cloak is it's really designed well. It's got a little um, like uh, washers that the hardware countersinks into. So they act as little ramps around the bolt heads. And the really? reason they don't countersink it into the metal is because once you screw it up, it's hard to get out. This creates armor for the bolts. And okay. on top of that, Smart. because it's all zinc plated, the yellow zinc or the gold zinc acts as a sacrificial anode. So even if you scrape it up, you're not going to get rust on on the skid plates, which kind of gives you that you know benefit of aluminum where you're not getting that rust, but also gives you steel skid plates. So it's mm -hmm. uh, you know one of those things where it was, to me it was worth it. Plus you're adding weight down low, which is where you want it on a Jeep because you want those axles and that armor to hold you you know closer to the ground when you're doing wacky things, mm -hmm. especially with the extra weight up top of the tent. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm supposed to be getting the uh, the version two of the Go Fast Camper, so. Um, the tent's yeah. ready, but the mounting isn't. And so we're working through some issues on that to try and get that stuff on. Mm -hmm. But it saves like 40 pounds off the roof. I mean, it'll probably be 50 or 60 in my case because I've got solar panels on my V1 and stuff like that. So looking to go to a different solar panel route, uh, to save weight than what I have on there now. And also, I didn't realize that the, the nice thing about the GFC stuff is because you have the two polycarbonate honeycomb panels, the uh, satellite radio can see through it. And I put uh -oh. the solar on and I Smart. had the worst satellite radio reception. I was all pissed and I realized, oh, you dumbass. It's because you put solar panels up there. So <laughs> having a mobile oh, solar see. panel is better because then I don't have to have anything on the roof um, mm -hmm. and I can get my radio reception. When you're in the middle of nowhere, like I am all the time, it's nice to have you know satellite uh, radio. I thought I picked the version two there, but that was the wrong tent. That was the uh, super light. Yeah. But it, I don't I think don't, there's is, not though. very many pictures of their V2 out there. There's one or two on a forerunner. But uh, there's not a there's not a whole lot of pictures of it. There's a lot of their V2 camper and the V2 platform tent is basically the top of the camper, um, you know, all aluminum now instead of steel. A lot of nice improvements. The way the latching mechanism works kind of uh, leverages the latch down close, so you don't have to fight it to get the pins in. The shocks are now on the inside, and the way it's designed means that you can put the the roof down and not have the fabric on the outside. Like it all folds nicer down. And Smart. the dimensions are still about the same. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be cool uh, when it finally arrives and, and having yeah. that weight off the roof and basically swapped for the metal cloak parts on the bottom. It'll be a wash, but it'll be nice because that weight is in the, you know, a better spot. Better spot. That's, yeah, no, it sounds like it's, I mean, 1.0 was good. It sounds like 2.0 is yeah. going to be even better. So yeah. with the prospect of my Jeep hopefully coming soon, what would you say should be modification number one? So what did you order? <laughs> so I ordered a, a Rubicon V6 manual. Yep, um, same as mine. Cool. Yeah, not much else. I got cold weather because it's fucking cold here. 
Uh, Did you do the uh, the all wheel drive transfer case, the full time nope. or the okay. oh, part time? So um, the difference for that, if for people are out there, is you can now order a Rubicon with the four auto in the transfer case out of the Sahara, and it uses CV axles in the front axle instead of U joints, so you don't get that crow hop and four wheel drive. Uh, what's nice about it is you can use that system on the pavement, and you know it'll work great for people who live in mountainous or snowy communities and stuff, and want to have you know that all wheel drive. That's a nice transfer case. Um, this traditional Obviously, Rubicon one is is made for uh, off road. Doesn't have the center differential or anything like that. But um, what size tires do you want to run? Eventually, thirty fives. I, I don't want to go any bigger okay. than thirty fives because the reality is, living in Connecticut, you have to drive at least like four hours to get to even anywhere where you can touch something resembling it, like a, a trail. Yeah. So I, I don't see a benefit in you know being that it'll be a daily. It, it's you know livability is is pretty <laughs> important you you might want to consider a small 37 like the bfg ko2s because those are basically a 35.6 or something like that they call wait, they call their 30 their 37s really? on the in the all-terrain are really small 37s so um honestly i love my setup daily driver no problem rides better with the av stuff rides better i would say if you're going to go with 35s you don't really you don't need a lift but from the right suspension, um, again, I'm a huge fan of the AV stuff. Um, the 2.5 is great. Might look, 35s look a little bit small on it. The 37s work well, look well, look good, but it, it rides better on the highway. So like their philosophy, the JK and the JL philosophies changed. On the uh, JL, I think it was, um, they're using a, a firm spring soft shocks. Whereas on the JL, they use a soft spring and a firm shock. So AEV basically applies the JK philosophy to their JL kit. So you go back to a firmer spring with really compliant shocks. And so their handling, cornering, all that is really good. I've, I've been, like I said, 20,000 miles in a year. I've seen it all. I've been in snow. I've been at altitude. I've been on twisty roads, highways, every rutted road from Michigan to California. Uh, and it's great. So I usually tell people the best thing you can do, number one, on any four by four, because the reality is that Rubicon will fit a 35 from the factory. Yep. Um, I like to have a little bit more clearance, but um, shocks, put a better shock on there. If you're only gonna do anything, one thing um, on the manual, you can get away with 35s without regearing. You should really be in a 488 with the manual if you go to 37s. Um, and of course with 37s, you kind of get that exponential starting, you know, increase of, all right, what do I have to deal with? Right. You know, Where now, did six you know, gear go? Yeah, exactly. And you'll find, so on a JK, fifth is one-to-one. -one. On a JL, fourth is one-to-one. -one. So the JL actually has two overdrives. Two overdrives, interesting. So, uh, and you'll find out that one, two, three is pretty good. And then there's a huge jump up to four. So the, the gearing pattern before, you know, there wasn't such a leap, but there's definitely a hole in the gearing and you'll feel it in hmm. certain times. You know, I like having the four-to-one with the manual just because it allows a lot better control. Plus with the setup I have, it's 100, uh, 100 to 1 crawl ratio um, with the 37s, the 48s, 4 to 1 transfer case and the, the manual. So it's, it's amazing. First gear, it won't go faster than one mile an hour. You can crawl over anything. You have so much control. It's, it's really great. Isn't that what they're, you know, talking about and touting in the uh, Rubicon Extreme yeah. Recon? So the, yeah, Recon the Extreme, Extreme Recon package is basically my Jeep, right? It's It's... 48s with the stick with they're doing 35s and i've got mm -hmm. 37s um but the extreme recon package i believe they're forcing people into those though by the way if you get the v6 i saw that, that and it's 39.95 recently, recently happened yeah that but happened 39.95 you're saving a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred dollars on regear mm -hmm. you're saving on wheels which is probably another thousand dollars on wheels yeah. you get a better tire to get in there shocks are basically the same rubicon shocks but you start kind of looking at the things you get and it's not as bad of a deal as it sounds. And you also basically have all that's warrantied, right? Like if you're going to throw 37s on it, you don't need to re-gear and your axles are fully warrantied, no questions asked. So mm -hmm. there's definitely some some benefits of the Extreme Recon. And yes, Bronco, you know, pushed them. They wanted to do that for years, um, but, um, you know, FCA had limited amount of money and, you know, some brands are struggling. Jeep wasn't one of those brands. So they're like, well, you don't have competition. You don't really need to do that. And now they need to protect it. So all the stuff that the product planners wanted to do is getting approved now because they know they have to for Bronco. So mid-cycle mm -hmm. refresh on that's coming up next year. I think people are going to be pretty impressed with what Jeep's come up with for 
what's going to actually compete with Bronco, you know, on the showroom floor. I don't really consider it competing direct right now because it's all the Bronco stuff with pre-orders, right? It's all people are going to buy a Bronco anyway. They want a Bronco. You got to wait for two, three years down the line where people are cross shopping them in a showroom, which is we're still right. a ways right. out of that because of supply. So let's talk Bronco. Yeah. What was your impression? <laughs> uh, so in full disclosure, I may have had some stuff to do with it. Um, okay. I, uh, I'm not I'm not just a Jeep homer. I'm a, I'm a lover of all things automotive. And I was on a, uh, a panel of outsiders that Ford uh, brought in a small panel of uh, industry experts. And uh, we all had kind of different part of the industry and we spent five years with the Ford team getting the Bronco as right as oh, possible. Wow. And um, I saw the first time I saw it was that that styrofoam model that they showed hmm. recently. That was the first my first interaction. So from there yeah, to where it that? ended up, it's pretty amazing. Uh, would have been, let's see, I want to say 17, uh, 16, probably. Yeah. So, yeah, I recently got the keys with no handler. I'm wearing the same shirt I am now. Look at that. And uh, <laughs> got to drive. I, yeah, I put 500 uh, miles on that thing in, in Texas over the course of uh, three days. I had a, a Sasquatch, Badlands, um, and a two door. So mm -hmm. everywhere I went, took it to barbecue, took it out uh, down downtown Austin. Um, I have to tell you, like, I am in Whataburger, first Bronco ever at Whataburger. There's a whole other story behind why Whataburger sucks, but um, sorry, in and out for anyone who's angry about that. <laughs> Fight, fight me. Uh, prove me wrong on my Instagram. At, at Literally live in a town with neither. So, yeah. 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 You're living with White Castle or something horrible like that. I'm oh, sure. Nope. So. Not even White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Oh, it's even worse. Anyway, um, we, you know, spent, I, I don't know if you guys watch, uh, uh, it was the Iron Resurrection and Shag Arrington's on that show. He's a buddy of mine. He lives in Austin. He's like, dude, come on, come pick me up in that thing. So I picked him up and went to downtown Austin. And it was hilarious Pete, because of all the Bronco people that saw my post on Instagram and shared it on all these like Bronco forums and Bronco. You know, Here's one in the wild. And I got all these people following me. I had a guy in a Tacoma pull up next to us, literally have a guy from on TV in my passenger seat. Nobody even knows it's him in his own hometown. And people are going, dude, I saw that on Instagram, you know, and they're like yelling at us. And we're just mm -hmm. laughing, you know, laughing our asses off because people are honking and they're waving they're trying to grab photos and we're just having a good old time. It's just two days with the top off, you know, driving through, uh, through Texas and uh, had a good time with it. So I'll, I'll say this, the Bronco is very good. Um, there might be a little bit of bias in there. I think Ford did a phenomenal job. There's things that I can sit in it and I can tell you what I contributed to that with my group and, and cool. personally, which is really cool to see that stuff. There's a lot of things that people are going to dig about it. And I'm, I'm proud of, uh, of that. I can have my name as part of that vehicle and, and say that, you know, I helped a little bit to, to make it what it is. Two doors, the one to get um, wheelbase is right. There's actually a ton of room in the second row, uh, like way better than let's say an FJ cruiser of that era mm -hmm. uh, or of the FJ cruiser era where it had a huge cargo and like no back seat. There's a lot of room in the back seat of the, the Bronco. Um, the halo roll cage is really cool. Visibility is great. Um, it's still not a Jeep. It still has IFS. Um, I'm sorry for everybody's like, IFS is going to take over the world. One of the reasons Jeeps are so popular is because you can put a lift kit in your driveway. And to get a Bronco <laughs> to have 40s or even 38s, it's going to take drop down brackets. It's going to take either, you know, a lift with wider control arm that's going to make it full size on the trail where you even can just wider. put it or, or wider, right? So um, you have to look at that kind of stuff. Uh, the differential is a clamshell style. It's not like the pumpkin style in the front. Um, so I wonder like if that's going to be an issue for, you know, it's going to be a lot more invasive to do gear, you know, gear swaps with it. Really? And it's at the end of the day, um, if you're going to take a vehicle stock and not do anything with it, the Bronco Sasquatch is phenomenal, better driver, uh, great power. Um, there are things I like about the Jeep better and I'm a Jeep owner. I put my money there and I had some say in Jeep also. There's a lot of things that Bronco is smart and did a lot better because it's also a, a newer platform. What I will say is daily drivers better, highways better, powers better, steering directional st steering is great. The hood is rad because it's such an old school flat hood with feel and you have the little edges rise up on the fenders mm -hmm. and those trail sites on the front are fantastic. They're, they really That's like smart. wheeling into a tight, you know, parking spot, knowing exactly where that corner is, is phenomenal. Like all that kind of stuff is great. But in a lot of places, all I kept going back to is if I want to run 37s, maybe let's call it 38s, 40s, I'm in a whole other league. Like, am I am I going to be able to take this thing 
and do the same exact 20,000 miles and trips I did with my Jeep and be as confident. Mm -hmm. um, 35s for 35s, yeah, I don't think there's a question about it. Modified to modified, let's see what the aftermarket does with it. But at the end of the day, it's still IFS, still a lot more complicated, a lot more pieces to break, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and I will also tell you that the four door for me is a fussy mess. You almost have to have the 35s on it, but I hate the way, if you look at, you know, this, is a, this is a perfect example, it looks great with the top off and the doors off. But if you look at it with the top on and the doors on, it sort of is really fussy looking. That C pillar is a mess. There's a bunch of cut lines. The roof comes down lower uh, than maybe it should, but it's because it has the curtain airbags that are up there. They use these frameless doors to make them so it's just the door that pulls off. Um, and the mirrors, like one of the things that's for me, the mirrors aren't a win for it's pushing it as, oh, but the mirrors stay on the vehicle. You don't have to have mirrors. Well, to be honest with you, a lot of Jeep guys like having the mirrors go off with the doors because they're in tight woods and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. the, the Bronco mirrors are ginormous. And the right one is a little bit too far forward at the A-pillar because it's so far forward on the cow and they just feel giant. And I wasn't a fan. And the other thing is those frameless doors that have the hidden hinges Ford did a brilliant job on how to remove those doors. The fact that there's like a weather pack connector that comes out, it's super easy to take them off. You can store four of them in bags upright in the cargo area of a four door. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. What's really not brilliant is the locating pin that you put in there that you use to put the doors on is really hard to see. And I saw a lot of guys struggling and scratching up the doors on the lower front edge because they couldn't figure out how to find that pin to drop the doors oh, on to put them back on. Awesome. So, already. Yep. Yeah. So while you're looking at, you know, the brilliance of, of the concept in execution, I would cover the crap out of the front of the door with painters tape your first 10 times that you take the doors on and off because you're not going to want to do permanent damage to it. Um, and also I didn't like the massive screen. I thought it was gratuitously big. Like it just overwhelms the dash. And the, like on Jeep, the gauges are super legible. You connect is still the industry standard. Um, Ford Sync 4 is better than it used to be. It's not perfect, but it's good. But because they're going for the stylistic approach, like the gauges are very video game with hard to read fonts. It's not an easy sweeping tack. It's like this Imagine. bar graph tack. Yeah. It's so hard to read the gauges. And it's not quieter than the uh, than the Wrangler on the highway at all. So don't feel like, really? oh, it's going to be so much better than the Wrangler. It's the wind noise and road noise are about the same. And the dirt mm -hmm. tracks are, they're, they're not loud, but you can hear them. So there's, so, it, again, it's <laughs> going to be what your use case is. Leaving it stock, Bronco's probably a better vehicle. Going to go do some stuff like I like to do, the Jeep's probably a better vehicle. Now, are there going to mm -hmm. be crossovers and there's pe people in the fringe who are going to do crazy stuff? Yes, absolutely. I'm just glad Jeep has a competitor that's worthy in the space. It absolutely is. I'm excited to see what the aftermarket does. It's going to be a really exciting product and people who buy them are going to love them as much as people uh, love their Jeeps. But um, Jeep's been building a convertible vehicle with uh, removable doors for a long time. So there's going to be some teething problems, I'm sure, in the beginning as they work out all the bugs. But that two-door is so sweet. It's such a great little vehicle. Yeah. So two questions. So first of all, those HVAC vents on the outer side of Yep. The dash, do they do yep. anything? Can you actually yeah, get they do, out of there? But the thing that I didn't like, and I don't even think I wrote about it, I felt like this was even super nitpicky that I didn't want to be like hating on it. But mm -hmm. there is, it, it was 100 degrees when we were in Texas. And there is a discernible difference between the vent on the left side and the vent in the center with the amount of air that hits you because the volume's different. So it's kind of being mm -hmm. funneled from this like little in, inset area where the other one's right on the dash. And so like, I would feel unevenly cool, right? Like, I know that oh, sounds like a little thing, but when you're driving yeah. and the sun's blowing in on or blasting in the window on these one side, you like to have that extra air there. And I felt like they were uneven. The other thing I'll say is uh, they use a different front door on their two door and their four door, which <laughs> they didn't have to do. And they beat pillars way far back, which is awesome because it gives you this giant frameless window to see out of. So visibility is great, but they miss because the seatbelt anchor is not adjustable like it is on the Jeep. And I thought it was too high on my neck. And I'm 5'9". I'm not a, a huge guy, but I'm not small either. And I had problems with comfort on my neck mm -hmm. where I thought that, you know, if it would, had an adjustable, you know, um, seatbelt, right. um, you know, deal would have been a, a lot more comfortable. So, okay. So two follow-ups. So I, regarding HVAC, I also know that two-door has no vents in the back, which people are saying could be a problem. Um, do you foresee the 2-3 as being like a reliability or just overtaxed 
for 37s, you know, or, or even 35s, a hundred thousand miles. I, I don't, I don't think so. Um, you know, Ford seems to have EcoBoost, you know, reliability down pretty, pretty pat. They're, they're solid engines. It works well on the Ranger. There's plenty of people running 35s out there on Rangers. No problem. Um, I don't think that the, if that's going to be a big deal, it's plenty powerful. They just upgraded it to, uh, you know, another power bump from, was it 285 to 300, 305 or whatever, right. Or maybe it's 310 now. Mm-hmm. Um, so plenty of power feels great. Had no issues with the 35s and, um, the stick and the Sasquatch package. Um, I think, I think it'll be, I think the four cylinder will be, um, well received. I think anybody's driven a two liter Jeep. This is even a little bit bigger than that people if you like the two liter jeep you're, you're gonna like the two three ecoboost although i will say that in, especially the v6 if anybody's driven an ecoboost right you there's a sound the ecoboosts don't really sound like an engine's revving they make their torque really low and they're sort of like this like rumbly low like whoa yeah it sounds exactly like an f-150 when you're on it it's not a glamorous sound it sounds very industrial it doesn't sound cheap like i'm not saying it sounds like you know some of those gm's from the you know the 80s and 90s that had that valve clatter it's not like that at all it's just this really like deep low growly sound but it's not sexy at all like it's not Mm -hmm. you don't go oh dude that sounds sick like it's it's not that but it also if you're not a fan of the ecoboost vibe and sound then you're gonna be disappointed in the bronco because it sounds like every you know ranger f-150 that's out there was it okay wasn't that why Raptor's going, isn't Raptor going back to a V8 because of that sound? Sure. Like, well, the- sort of. Raptor's going back to a V8 because uh, TRX came and made the Ford team go, oh. Crap. I saw one today. <laughs> in, I, in like downtown city life, it is comical. It's just a TRX. I, uh, yeah, I get mine in a couple huge. weeks and, uh, you know, for our, of the year. So I'll have that for a year on four wheeler. Nice. I'm looking forward to it. it. That truck is so amazing. It's, looking, it's so much better than the current Raptor in every way. I mean, it's just, it's not even close. Are you and you look forward? at like the TRX shocks on it, um, you know, the, the TRX shocks from Bill Stein, they're like 10 times the processing power than even the Fox live valve that's on the new truck. Like that's how advanced they are. Mm-hmm. They have independently adjustable, infinitely variable circuits on both compression and rebound, not just on compression when it has jump detection. Uh, the TRX, when it leaves the ground, it unlocks all the clutches in the transfer case and makes it so the transmission doesn't upshift. So you, so it doesn't, you know, do anything weird in the air when you mm. land. It's got jounces inside of it, you know, JCOs in the front. The thing is just unbelievable. It's it's so amazing. Um, I can't wait to get more more uh, time with it. But yeah, it's going to be funny. Oh yeah, here's one of our videos. Look how stable it is. Oh man, the body's flat. Yeah, so that's called Skyhook, and it's a uh, technology Bill Stein um, introduced on Maseratis. Um, and what it does is it imagines that the vehicle is essentially being held from the sky um, like that. Maybe this is better. Um, <laughs> right. And so what it does is in the past, you know, suspension companies are like on your Magna ride, it's sensing at the wheel and it's adjusting at the wheel at a really fast rate. What the Bilstein system does is it has sensors that are all distributed all over the vehicle. It's using yaw sensors, ride height sensors, position sensors, and what it's doing is doing whatever it can to keep the body stable versus trying to impact each individual wheel. So it basically it allows each corner to work as a team for the vehicle and allows the vehicle to stay really flat rather than sort of compensating for what's happening. And it is wild. In fact, the brother of mine tuned it and he's like, we had to put understeer back into the algorithm um, because what was happening is your inner <laughs> ear doesn't feel it sliding and reaching the limit and you oh, no. roll it because it's so artificial. It masks any feeling from the driver's seat. So they had to put that vibe back into the shocks so that the driver would have a sense of what the vehicle was doing. So people don't just end up yeah. going Wadding it off side over side. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. yeah. It's just, it's like amazing technology. And the fact that it, it's on okay. a vehicle like the TRX, that much horsepower is crazy. So speaking of, I, I, I want to talk about another uh, FC Stellantis vehicle that sounds amazing <laughs> and has a lot of suspension, though perhaps not enough. Um, yeah. The 392 Wrangler. So, yeah. I mean, Be- best Wrangler to date by far, best ride on the highway by far, uh, uses different rear geometry than the standard Wrangler. Um, that's noticeable. Uh, How so? Very- uh, just in the way it tracks and drives. It's such a good driver on the highway. Um, just the way it feels, you, you kind of don't get that right, 
you know, left front to right rear kind of like feeling of being thrown over. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a better, it's just, it, they just clean some stuff up. Now it has the same, it's the highest ride height. It's basically the same ride height as the diesel, but it doesn't have any more wheel travel because of how deep the Hemi oil pan sump is and how tall the engine is. They had to kind of get it where the body, you know, it fit under the hood, but above the axle. Mm -hmm. um, so while it has the tallest ride height, it doesn't have the most travel out of the Wrangler family. So a lot of people don't know that. The other thing about the 392 is it's super undertired with 32s. It needs 35s. The extreme recon package obviously adjusts that. Mm -hmm. You lose the Fox shocks with the with the 395 with the extreme um, recon package, though. It just gets a, a bronze taller shock because I'm sure they didn't have time to tune it when they decided to apply, you know, 35s on the 392. Throw the shocks out anyway. While they're amazing on the road, they're they're not my for that level of power my biggest bitch is that it's just an aluminum Fox 2.0, no reservoir. Go get some real shocks, get a Bill Stein 8100, get a Fox upgrade, get a reservoir, or even put bypasses. The vehicle's deserving of it. It's capable of it. There's so much damn power in that thing. The, the Hemi is unbelievable crawling, even though you, everybody's like, why it only has 373s? It doesn't have a four to one. You don't want a four to one in it. You got to remember that part of crawling isn't just about gearing. Gearing is to mask other problems, right? This, the Hemi is so big, it acts as a massive air pump and it's crawling is really good because that big air pump Hemi is holding everything back. So you don't need the gearing you do with the smaller displacement vehicles. So a 272 and a 373 are fine. There's no reason for you to, to even sweat it. And once you drive it, like a lot of people are like, oh, the transfer case, the gear, no, 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 go drive it. It is plenty, um, no issues whatsoever with performance. And it's just an unbelievably great, great vehicle and a great job. It looks good. Um, you know, I that's had a little good. bit of fun. You know, you can see behind me on my uh, on my image here. The picture that's um, made the rounds. Yeah, there's a video of that. There it is. There we go. Yeah, yeah this was uh, donuts gone <sighs> almost really wrong. Yeah, nice I mean, it wasn't that it wasn't that bad, actually. It's funny because it caused a lot of lawyer problems. And there are a lot of unhappy friends at Jeep when uh, they, they saw that. But. Um, the reality is, is we were doing power slides for video and got caught a rut. And if anybody's ever up on two wheels, the reality is, is when you're doing stuff like that, you should really have your lockers on. The reason for that is when you have open discs and you go up on two wheels, your power goes into the wheel in the air, yeah. not the wheel on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so you stall out and that's why people roll. And so what you want is to have that even power so you can drive out of it. So as soon as I felt the front come up, you can actually watch it. There's another video that's a lot closer than this one. You can see me correct as soon as it goes and I, I hit the throttle and, and I drive out of it. It looks scary. Uh, our social guy, Billy, like screamed, which is hilarious in that video. You can hear the audio, but um, it's it was fine. It was it came up. I just steered into it and it came down. It wasn't that big of a deal. Oh, man, oh. I got to find his. The pictures tell a different story, but yeah, like <laughs> the momentum, pictures are awesome. You can't convey momentum like yeah yeah no, it, when as you're it in happens it and you feel it lifting it was almost like somebody was just picking me up you know and i've been doing uh, there's i've probably done this to 100 vehicles where we lift a little bit of tire they i lifted inside tire and they're like hey can you do that again lift it a little bit more for photos well obviously it lifted too much um but over the years at four wheeler like uh, uh, again 100 vehicles probably where i power slid in the desert on you know soggy dry leg doing photo shoots in California and trying to get that action shot of the opposite lock steering power sliding through. And, you know, sometimes they lift and you still got to be careful. And this was one where I just have to have a video crew and a camera guy and, and they got it. And uh, there's, it's funny because 20 years ago, maybe 21 years ago, a guy by the name of Ben Stewart who uh, worked uh, for us and his popular mechanics and a bunch of other places, Ben did that to an Xterra. And there's a famous uh, Xterra photo of him saving is similar to this. It's even wilder than this photo. And I, I've got a, uh, a double photo of those things side by side that I'll post in a couple of weeks when the kind of the Jeep stuff dies out and people forget about it. I'll throw that up there and let people see that, you know, Ben and I kind of are in this unique class of uh, we saved it because <laughs> there's a time at four wheeler. We might be the only magazine that actually rolled in uh, a Hummer. Um, and uh, we ended up <laughs> buying that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What Hummer the same was it? Thing. It was the uh, H1. I mean, you rolled an H1? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. That wasn't my dad's before <laughs> I got there. It was like 99 or something like that. And they, uh, they were doing power slides, caught a rut and flipped it. And I think oh. we ended up buying a, an H1 back in the day. At least that's the, that's the rumor of that's, the outcome of that one. 
it happens, right? Oh. I, I remember one time we rolled a or flopped a, a JK right when the JKs were brand new. We're on another year. We're crawling with a boulder. We got this great shot where the rear tire was lifting and our art director was in it. And he probably shouldn't have been the guy. And I'm like, a little more, a little more. And he stabbed it and it just goes and then fell on its side. Like, oh, crap. oh. so we pull it back over. There's a little bit of crack in the top. There was no dents on it. The fender was even fine. We folded the mirror back out and we called Jeep and Jeep said, is it going to win? I'm like, oh, I don't know. We haven't done the thing. He goes, uh, well, if it wins, just bring it back on a pallet. I don't care. And that's sort of, you know, Jeep's <laughs> attitude over the years has been like, hey, you know, your job is to test our vehicles. We're mm-hmm. fine with it and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the JK obviously ended up being an, a, a, an amazing vehicle. But it was one of those things where you're like, crap, I don't want to make the phone call. But, you know, sometimes you make the phone call. And right. it, sometimes right. it's sometimes it's okay. And sometimes insurance companies get involved. Yeah. Jeez. Well, that's, yeah. Oh, God. I can't imagine. <laughs> Hi, Jeep. Yeah. Um, Sorry about that. Yeah. The mirror thing, going back to Bronco, though, is something that you kind of wonder about. You yeah. know, you could like, the mirror doesn't provide the give that it needs to give. Is it going to like bend the cowl well, or the windshield or something? Or told me too. They're like, well, you can take the mirror off. And I'm like, well, yeah, but that's still an extra step. So, I'm sure there's wires hanging out. It's a bolt, another bolt that mm-hmm. you got to keep track of. Like you shouldn't have to. Well, they fold in. Yeah, but you know, I can get a little six inch mirror on the side of my Jeep and be done and not right. have to worry about it. That's the yeah. point. And and Jeep obviously way more body protection because it narrows in the front. You've got those fenders and stuff like that, where Bronco is straight all the way down. So it, like I said, f- for go fast stuff, the Bronco is going to be a little bit better. For the real rock crawling stuff, Jeep's going to be a little bit better. Daily driver goes to Bronco modifying goes the jeep they're really mm-hmm. close like I, it's this is this is such a like just pulling at straws like they're both really good vehicles there's it's not a it's by no means a wrangler killer uh but it's very very good and, and wrangler is going to lose some sales for people who want it to be a little bit more civilized but ha- you know that's the nature ha- of competition hasn't wrangler like grown in sales every year for a while oh, yeah like oh since yeah, yeah. Seven. They're, ra- they're not hurting on wrangler it's it's and yeah. i've tried to explain to them the reason you're not hurting is because solid axles make it so easy to modify and, and go in the aftermarket. And that's why it's successful. And, and Jeep gets it. There's, there's some very ardent, uh, I would call them guardians of the brand who look like IFS, IRS, everything. We don't care, but Wrangler mm-hmm. has to stay iconic in what Wrangler is. And um, you know, there's a guy who's running global now who I think gets it when he came in, he's a European guy. And he's like, I'm not a big fan of solid axles. Well, I think he gets why that matters here in the U S and <laughs> like I said, so. there's some, there's some people where as long as they're employed and it's under their watch, Jeep is going to be just fine. And it'll still be, be what we want it to be. And it's, it's guys, Jeep is not dying because Bronco came out and no, it's going to okay, be no. every bit. It's be Chevy versus Ford all over again. It's it, be if anything, Wrangler will get better. Oh, it's already it starting. Will. Yeah. yeah like it, fives, yeah. Factory. Yeah. Like I, but, it's so good yeah they've also managed to make you know solid axles livable yeah absolutely so that was for sure that's part of it too. light years better than jk right oh yeah oh yeah they don't even they don't drive like the same vehicle yeah no, uh, no. i i would be really curious to see what would happen if they put the t-rex 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 whatever it is that suspension on don't listen to johnny lieberman everybody it's not T-Rex. It's T-R-X. 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 Lieberman is my buddy, but he's a lying liar that <laughs> lies. He invented that because he saw the dinosaur thing. That The dinosaur thing came after the truck was named. It's always been T-R-X. It's not T-Rex. Just like the T-R-X off-road back in the 20 freaking 09 yeah. or 2010 Ram. It wasn't the T-Rex oh. back then. It's not the T-Rex now. Dude, Just so bad. you guys know, I... I go behind Johnny on podcasts and then clean him up because I love him, but he's lying to you about T-Rex. Well, that's he a call out. That. So he's got to come right. back on and defend him. Right. Defend his I'll honor. email Johnny tomorrow. <laughs> Please do. Please do. That's funny. So Dude, T-Rex. I, I yeah. love seeing those yeah. T-Rex off-roads. Like when they're, I was like, oh yeah. Like well, I feel like I bet prices on those go up a little bit as guys go like, no, I have the original. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Like well, if you really had the original, I think they were called the outdoorsman for a while. Same package, but remember that the uh, upgraded monotube shocks and skid plates and tow hooks and all that mm. stuff. I forgot about that. I'm, uh, come on. I mean, Sorry. It I have a screen like a freeze. <laughs> it's not okay when you have two of them. <laughs> 50% of the screens are down. So, all right, we're, we're brushing up on, uh, on time here, but you've also oh, spent a bit of time on Chris. What did you say? The defense, please go to GM. Yep. That's where I'm trying to get to. 
Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense, uh, Ross? Yes. Okay. Okay. We can do that. I, it's cool. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. This is the worst um, transition we've ever had. I know. I got totally derailed because my internet also froze <laughs> as I was trying to bring up pictures. I don't even know where to start with this thing. So it's, it's what is it underneath? It's a Colorado underneath? Yeah. So basically it's a Colorado package. So uh, the military put out a, uh, basically a call for manufacturers to develop a ISV, infantry squad vehicle. The beauty of this is GM Defense is basically being treated as a startup, right? Like it's entering the space as a new company, as a division of General Motors. But what's different than all of these other people is you look at all these defense markets and they always have cost overruns and they always have to deliver, you know, all these vehicles. And they're like, oh, we can't do it. Oh, cost overrun. Oh, it costs the government more. And they just get fat off these government contracts. GM's looking at it as a different way. They're doing what's called COTS, which is commercial off-the-shelf components. And because GM has this robust library, if you will, of componentry that's already been R&D'd, they already know what the finite engineering analysis is on all these parts. So when the government says we need a military vehicle that can last and meet these parameters, they go looking in their parts bin and go, oh, we can do that with what we have off the shelf. We don't need to do new wheel bearings. We don't need to do new shocks. We don't need to do new control arms. So basically, this is a Colorado-based infantry squad vehicle that is made for, uh, you know, lightweight, to be fast, to be affordable. And uh, it's based on the Colorado ZR2. And I think it's got 35s on it. Um, it's really easy to manufacture. They're doing it in, uh, in, uh, on the East Coast. <laughs> and I think by Charlotte uh, Motor Speedway, actually, they've got their factory there. And it's, they put this thing together. And I want to say from proof of concept to now is like maybe only a couple of years or something like that. And oh, so sure. the military is starting to look going, oh, wait, we've got the ability to engage our commercial companies and our commercial industry here in the United States to get us what we need faster, quicker, cheaper. That means more vehicles. That means more R&D for other things. That means more safety, more weapon systems, all that. And so this is the first fruits of really that labor. And it is uh, incredibly impressive. I drove uh, an electrified version that had the, the new Bolt uh, EV motor in it, um, the crate motor that they're doing, the E-crate. And then I did, this is the diesel. And there's also my favorite mode on that. It was super cool. It's, um, I, I can't remember what they call it now, but it's, uh, I don't know, it's not war mode or whatever, but um, they push a button and it basically takes off all of the um, nannies off the engine. So yeah. if you're in a shooting battle, you yeah. don't want to go into limp mode because you lost coolant. This thing, right. you push the button and it goes, like everything turns turns Here's off and you, you run this thing until it burns down to the ground. So That's there cool. is a button on there where you can do that. Um, like but it was like really hell impressive. Mode. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It exactly. looks like it's got a Colorado shifter and everything still. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. That's it's pretty definitely funny. some parts bin stuff in there. There's uh, quite a bit of 3D printed stuff on there as other oh, as supply chain comes online and stuff. But um, very fun to drive. Very cool. Um, I could imagine a bunch of 18 uh, year olds getting their hands on that and then just, you know, doing a bunch of really stupid stuff in it because it's so much fun. That, <laughs> that, that comes to the point that I'm always reminded. I had a buddy who was the Hummer mechanic for years. The amount of times that the wrong fuel was put in either a diesel oh, yeah. or a fuel oh. or a regular oh, yeah. fuel or petrol Hummer. Like just, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Not good. Every single, all, every day. Are those points that those circular hoops that say lift, is that for like helicopter retrieval? Yeah. So p part of the deal is they, they had to be a certain size to fit in the back of a C-17 or um, under, a, and had to be a certain weight to be underslung from a Chinook helicopter. All these types of things are all really important. I think even a UH-60 Blackhawk, so the government said it has to be this long, this wide, this much weight, carry this many people, survivable to this degree. And so basically, yeah, it's, it's designed to uh, meet all those requirements. And when GM first got the, the requirements out of it, they looked and they went, oh, we already have that in the Colorado. Can we possibly take the Colorado and turn it into something like this? And then that's now you're looking and seeing what the ISV is. So, so and yeah. I got to drive both of them and it was, they were a blast. Is, does the drivetrain... I don't know, lack of a better phrase, beefed up or is it just, uh, no, it's basically a uh, Chad Hall's race truck on the bot on the underside. So it has all the okay. Chevy performance parts, um, you know, like the, um, better shocks and things like that, but it's all, it's essentially Chad Hall's race truck in military form. Okay. It's got the bison wheels too. The yeah. AED yep. parts. Yep. Very cool. The front end, um, the nose and headlights, 
it does kind of look like a focus rs <laughs> yeah a little bit a little bit <laughs> i can't unsee it but yeah that's amazing that they're doing that and and you know it's needed yeah, i'm trying to remember does job what, makes jobs here i'm trying to remember what the other aev parts actually the wheels are uh hutchinson uh beadlock government style um and then aev has i want to say Oh, man, I wish I could remember off the top of my head. It, it, it might be the diff covers. There's some other AV parts on. Anyway, it's it's got, there's a bunch of stuff that if you saw it up close, you'd go, I know where that is. I know where that came from. It's really cool. That's funny. I mean, that uh, good for them, you know? That's yeah. an application they probably weren't expecting when they when they got their hands on a Colorado the first time. Sure. But, yeah, also sure. probably not where we expected to see a Colorado when we saw yeah. them the first time. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> Very cool. I like that one a lot. Yeah. I like yeah, the race like, truck. Exactly. Can we play with that one? <laughs> All right. Is that the show? Do we do it? I, I think we did it. <laughs> so one, one last wrap up note. Um, yeah, sure. Sean's got job news, right? Got some, some uh, four wheeler news, huh? Uh, well, so it's sort of, it's uh we made this big stink about four-wheeler joining the Motor Trend family. We've always been part of the uh, Motor Trend family, but what we did is we combined Hot Rod, four-wheeler, all of our truck, low rider, super street, all of them are now on the same tech stack on motortrend.com. So uh, it may be a little bit confusing as we get the branding and the tagging worked out on the new websites, but basically it's going to allow a much faster experience. Uh, we know that a lot of people go in through search and through social. So the, the <laughs> same editors are there, the same brands that you love are there. All that kind of stuff is is going on. Um, so you know, it's it's all that, but a lot faster, better galleries. Just the, the whole experience is a lot better. So we just uh, did that this past week, and um, yeah, we give us a give us a month or two to get all the bugs worked out, and ah, uh, it's only going to get better from here. I I was searching for Magneto earlier, and I found everything I was looking for in a couple of quick searches. Yeah, <laughs> it's amazing wow. what happens when you port all your stories over to MotorTrend.com from uh, where Four Wheeler was and, and was kind of an old site that had been neglected for a while all of a sudden we're starting to pop up in seo searches and it's like yeah all right you know? there's so, the numbers <laughs> yeah i'll take those little wins i think uh the first uh, you know don't quote me on this but the first uh four days that we did it truck trend uh, went up 50 percent just oh, from shit. being on motor trend yeah <laughs> so it's a, it's a pretty oh, big deal for God. me and my team if uh, we can keep that content rolling like that but uh, but yeah, that's, that's basically, uh, so you're not, the, you're not supposed to see those kind of jumps from SEO for like three to six months. So well, gotta... normally Google recrawls. So if that's happening right now, I can't even imagine it'll be a, it'll be a juggernaut after we get recrawled by, uh, by the Google. Yeah. yeah. That's very cool. Well, I mean, yeah, it, it's not, bank. yeah, it's, it's not exactly, uh, all new stuff, but it, it's, it seems like it's very positive. So yeah. I like to keep my job a little while longer. So uh, I'll take, I'll take all, all of that stuff. Yeah. And me, uh, drive 392 is like crazy and build up old G projects. So exactly. Just want to go quiet camping. Fair enough. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And then have your truck show up for you. Yep. No, I don't want that. No. <laughs> no. Zero well, desire for that. So we agreed that that was bad then, right? Can we? Yes. Just, we all, all of us. Yeah. All right. Got it. Yeah. Right. That's, that is unanimous okay just want yeah. to make sure i didn't want to leave any of our listeners on this show confused as to where our stance was where we, yep. that's a bad thing Got we it. don't like the prospect of like you know the guy and girl go fishing while jeep autonomously stalks his prey you know no, 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 they, it'll, it'll go on the off. trail it'll drive 100 miles away to go charge itself and then that way it's <laughs> got like 10 percent more power when it comes back to yeah you. what was that noise what, yeah. what's in the woods where's my jeep <laughs> yeah where's my jeep a bear or a jeep i don't know i don't, I don't know, know. <laughs> bear spray yeah, but right. the bear spray they left in the jeep which is now 100 miles yeah. away from camp. exactly i know i literally we're we, montana's womp, womp. montana's very soon so actually by the i think when this comes out we're either there or back i think we'll be back but uh i actually ordered bear spray today so and there you go yeah yep Live, living like a true montanan uh, yeah, I, I just, it was, <laughs> I picked the one that said it was the most effective, but good, good marketing. The, yeah. All of the distances, they're all like, <laughs> yeah, 30 feet. And then every review is like, no, wait till 10. I'm like, 10, 10 feet, 10 yeah, feet. No. <laughs> yeah, 10 feet's really the, close, uh, by the way. Yeah. 10 feet's incredibly close really, to like really close. Four, you heard about three that, to 600 pound bear. Really sad story. That camper, she was, it was like a, a biking group. And they were camping and a, uh, a bear like approached them in the middle of the night. 
they like threw all their food away, but apparently not all of it. And then the bear came and, you know, mauled one of the people. Yeah. Like dragged her out of the tent. Horrible story, but you know, yep. a reminder that bears are dangerous. Bear, bears are with them. more active too <laughs> right now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah don't, so, don't become bear poop. That's, no, that's the not moral the of the story. We're, we're uh, already uh, coaching the kids on like, hey, at the cabin, like you're not spending time outside alone. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You'll have this yeah. handy can of bear spray. Exactly. This will be <laughs> Let nearby. Him get 10 feet. Yeah. 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 Let him get half the distance of that F-150's length to you. <laughs> Let's put it in perspective. Exactly. <laughs> That's so close. That'll work. Okay. Uh, I got to go back to my notes and I hid them. <laughs> Where are my notes? Okay. I can wrap up the show. I know how to do this. Uh, you can rate and review us on iTunes. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, Sean on social is Sean P. Holman, Instagram and Twitter. Or Adventure Jeep on Instagram. It's ADV Jeep. ADV Jeep, yep. ADV Jeep. Truck Show Podcast is at Truck Show Podcast on IG or just Truck Podcast on Twitter. I actually like that one better. Just Truck, truck Podcast. Podcast. Just, yeah. It's very, <laughs> very, very, very short and to the point. We have zero Twitter followers because we both hate Twitter. Uh, I understand but, uh, completely. Yep. <laughs> I, I put photos up and retweet links and then turn it off because I get angry so fast. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you can read what Ross and I write on the universe, the real universe. I will actually write up, Jeff. I will write up the ID4. I swear that's coming. I promise. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Liar. Uh, universe, car Bibles, UTV, ATV. Oh, I'm sorry. UTV driver, ATV rider, and the drive. Which, yes. I, I finished up a uh, product review for them for the Stanley Hex Key stuff. I finally got, like, got it submitted. And they're like, what'd you use it on? I was like, my daughter's crib and a stool. <laughs> i also used it on the crossbars of the suburban but like That's there really aren't funny. a lot of things to use hex tools on which i just used it on my kid's razor scooter today because the the screw that holds oh the brake handle God. in place fell out Dude. anyway long you story. should have taken the product <laughs> photos of you using it on the crib as if it was like a review of you using it like on your truck or something i <laughs> you should have just gone to ikea and yeah. did all their display furniture just up yes! the like just what are you guys what are you guys doing i'm just testing the product right now we're good yeah, don't mind me <laughs> can you show me how this stuff goes back together <laughs> yeah dude you want to see what a pile of particle board looks like yeah, here's right. a chance oh my god dude are there people who just put ikea together on youtube that seems yes. like something to how to build a channel super quickly <laughs> it's 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 a thing already i think you're late to that party yeah it definitely <laughs> that just hit my head yeah so you can follow ross he's at no not like the one from friends toyota if you're listening at no not like yes. the one from friends Toyota responded to us on Instagram the other day and they forgot the no. So I don't know who no, not like the one from, or not like the one from friends is, but Ross has a no at the beginning. I'm at overlanding dad. This is our show. And I ruined all of that closing. <laughs> That's even okay. better that way. We're good. It's authentic. We'll go with that. Yeah. Yep. At least we that's how I do podcasts. It. So yeah, we didn't fake it. 